Hi, I'm Jay and welcome to this month's edition of Wild Watch. In this month's episode, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our amphibians and what they do leading up to winter. Phoebe is going to tell you a little bit about the animal health checks they do on the birds, with Scott finishing off on the high tides and the winter arrivals. So we're currently in the temperate breeding room for amphibians. This is where we keep a lot of our northern hemisphere species. A lot of people would think that our native amphibians actually hibernate during the winter months. Well that's not strictly true. A lot of our reptiles will hibernate, the amphibians they tend to just slow right down. But if we have mild winters between 5 and 10 degrees, these guys will actually go around and hunt at night during the rainfall when it's a little bit warmer. A North American species, the marbled salamander that we keep here at Slimbridge, actually behaves a little bit differently during this time of the year. They spend a lot of time underground, they're known as a mole salamander, but during October, after heavy rainfall and at night, they'll congregate in their masses to breed on the surface. Once they bred, the females will go down to areas of water which is dried out, so the sides of a riverbank or a pond, and they'll lay eggs and they'll guard those eggs until the end of October when they hatch after it's flooded. As the temperate species wind down for winter, our tropical species here at Slimbridge start to increase in their activities. So down in the Redbush Tropical Breeding Room, this time of the year, our tropical species get going. We try and manage it so the temperates are breeding in spring and our tropical species are breeding in winter. So recently, the blue dart frogs have become a lot more active. The females have been wrestling to compete for the male and you can see this on display in total opposite the Lego frog. Every October we perform an annual inoculation to help protect most of the grazing species in our collection against parasites. Parasites occur naturally in the ground and our birds just need a little helping hand in advance of the winter months to help them get through. In addition to these naughty little nanes off show, you'll have seen us out and about in the grounds last week. It's a lovely opportunity to get people from lots of different departments together for bird handling experience and ringing experience. In every exhibit with grazing species, we'll herd the birds safely into a corral where lines of people will line up in order to hold a bird. It's a lovely opportunity for me, traditionally the scribe, to check up on all the rings and the Darvik rings that we discussed last episode and to make sure that everyone's nice and healthy and ready for the breeding season to come. Bird handling can be quite a challenge with some of the species that we keep at Slimbridge. The swans in particular and some of the stronger geese can be very difficult to hold and take a lot of skill. Equally, our inoculator needs to make sure that all the species are given their appropriate amount and um, that we follow up on any hunches or observations that we see throughout the couple of days. Whilst these juvenile nanes won't be breeding next season, their mums and dads and counterparts will. And so after a couple of days, the medicine will start to take effect. And it's lovely to know that those breeding birds will be in tip top condition for the season ahead. I'm Scott, the new reserve warden here at Slimbridge. And we're out on the banks of the River Severn, just as it's approaching high tide. High tide is a fantastic time to come and see the reserve. We've got lots of birds being pushed off the river and out onto the pools and scrapes across the site. We've got things like knot that we've turned up on the South Lake with the blacktail godwits. And now that the Dumbles pools are full of water, we've got things like golden plover and widgeon really starting to build up in their numbers. And as well as these flocks of wintering birds starting to build up, we're also seeing some of our specialities start to arrive. The first have been the white-fronted geese. Most of the time they're hanging out with the grey lags, canadas and barnacle geese on the Dumbles, but we've been having great views of them from the kingfisher hide as well. They're really easy to identify. The adults have got the big white blaze around the base of the bill and they haven't got the pale wings that you usually see on the grey lags in flight. But watch out for the juveniles, they've not got the white blaze yet. And ahead of one of our other specialities arriving, the Buick Swan, we've started feeding out on the rushy. So we're now seeing lots and lots of ducks starting to arrive. Things like pintail, potchard and shell duck are all there in really good numbers and those numbers will only increase as the winter goes on. And the winter is when Slimbridge really comes alive. It's when we've got the most birds on site. It's a fantastic time for you to come and see us. 
Thanks for watching this month's episode. Keep an eye out on our social media sites for any events that are coming up. And hopefully you'll tune in for next month's edition of Wild Watch.